Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to talk to you about fixed layout versus flexible layout web pages. So, got a basic web page here set up just so you can over just see layout overall. But before I get into that, I just wanted to point out some different things about knowing the resolution of your visitor's computer. Because what you do not want to do is you don't want to design your web page for your computer. You want to design it for what most people have, your customers basically. So you want their experience to be fantastic. You don't want them to have to scroll needlessly. So let's check this out first. These are some browser stats over at the W3 schools and very recent here for January 13. And I want to draw your attention to the 1024 by 768 resolution. A very common resolution in the past. And but as we're you know, you'd even see here in the mid 2000s, very, very popular resolution. But now that we're getting into 2013, the 1024 wide pixel wide resolution is a real minority. And what is more popular now, of course, are things higher than 1024. So if I click on the higher option, I'll see that the 1366 pixels wide is super popular. 1920 is the second most popular. So a lot of people visiting your websites have really big resolutions. Now, in this particular video, even somewhat of a little lecture here, is I'm not going to say which one is the best. But I do want you to keep in mind that not everybody has the same resolution that you do. And you need to make sure that your websites look good to these other people. When in doubt, go simple. When in doubt, go smaller. Um, I'm of the school of thought that you design for the lowest common denominator. And when I see numbers like, oh, gee, only 9% have a 1024 resolution, 9% is a lot to me. 9% uh, of potential customers could be annoyed at your website if they visit. So I'm still OK with uh, styling in a 1024 or catering to a 1024 crowd. And those that have a bigger resolution, so be it. Let's check this out real quick. Um, this is uh, Amazon's website. And by the way, my resolution right now that you're seeing is, um, is 1280 wide. But let me size this to 1024. So I'm going to size this down to 1024. And at a 1024 wide resolution, you'll see that Amazon has a little bit of a horizontal scroll. I think that's a problem. I think that's a design mistake, and it's something that Amazon normally doesn't mis make this mistake, but I think someone screwed up somewhere. Amazon normally tries to design their web page at a 1024, and they have a flexible web page. If I make my screen wider, the Amazon website stretches to accommodate, and that is a flexible website. And if I stretch even wider beyond my recording, you can't see it, but yeah, it's it stretches even wider. What happens though is we start to get some white gaps here on the left and the right of this center column, so to speak. But at 1280 wide, page looks pretty good. It's filled up really nicely. No, no unnecessary white space and stuff like that. And if I go back down to like that 1280, it was around there, it still looks pretty good. Notice that I my columns have changed. Out here, I've got this shot by department on the left that is visible for me. At a kind of a 1024 resolution, I don't have that, but I do have that, a hor that annoying horizontal scroll. You do not want a horizontal scroll to show up on your browser at a normal or reasonable resolution. And I still think 1024 is normal, reasonable resolution. Let's make sure I'm at 1024. I'll just use my little browser sizer here, which is flaking out on me. There we go. 1024. You can get these add-ons for Chrome or Firefox, so no big deal there. Let's check out uh, Zipcar. Zipcar 1024 looks great. Okay, fills up the screen nicely. A little bit of white space on the left and the right. Um, now, if I go wider, Zipcar has more white space on the left and the right. So Zipcar is using a fixed web page layout. Amazon is using flexible. Zipcar is using fixed. Which one's better? Doesn't really matter. You decide for yourself. Some people go for fixed. Some people go for flexible. Okay, now the web developer going the flexible layout, they're probably thinking, you know what, I'm, you know, there's so many different resolutions out there. I want to make a web page that adapts 
to some of these resolutions, whether they're smaller, 1024, or whether they're bigger, 1366, or 1280, or 1920, or 1440. So I want my site to expand and contract to help accommodate. Of course, they're not designing for 1024 or for smaller than 1024. Now the site that's going the fixed layout, they're taking a slightly different approach. Different, not wrong, just different. And they're saying, you know what, I want my site to look the same for all users, period. It's not going to adapt as much. Um, what I'll end up doing is I'll center the content and then you'll just have more white space. So at a really wide resolution, um, there's just even bigger amounts of wide space if, uh, white space if I were to stretch this out. And then you can decide for yourself, well, what's the better approach? Fixed layouts tend to be easier to manage, easier to organize, and you can be more assured that your site's going to look the same for everybody out there. Flexible layouts give you some benefits, but they also bring in some risk. For instance, we saw at Amazon, at 1024, we get this annoying tiny horizontal scroll. Somebody didn't account for that. Um, also, at a super wide resolution, we, you might start to say, you know what, my content's not going to stretch too much, but if it keeps on stretching over and over, maybe this white space in this middle column doesn't look as good anymore. So, you've got to decide for yourself which route you want to go. So, back to my little demo page here. I've got a little two column layout, sidebar, header, main content, footer. Let me open up my editor real quick. And let me bring it over to my recorder side. There we go. And let me zoom in a bit. Okay, so just so you can have an overview, this is a basic web page. Nothing too shocking in it. I've got a container. In fact, can I? No, I can't get the whole body in there, but I've got a container. I've got my top group, which contains my sidebar and contains a main column. By the way, I'll make this uh, web page available to you. Just look at look for the link in the description of the video. And then within my main, I've got the header and the content, and then I've got my footer outside of this top group area. So, and there's, by the way, there's a number of different ways you can do this to create this particular layout. I went this way, though, because it makes it easy to ensure that the footer is down here. I wasn't sure where my sidebar was going to be at first. I might change it up a little bit. So that's my basic layout. Now, if I go back to that editor... There it is. So if I go back to my editor, now I go up to the CSS, you can see that my container, which is really controlling my entire website, very good practice. Uh, my opening div container is right after my opening body tag. My closing div for the container is right before my closing body tag. But my container is set to a width of 960 pixels. This is a very common unit of measurement, 960 pixels. And it's good if you're catering to a 1024 resolution or bigger. So I've kind of gone the route of Zipcar. Zipcar is catering to that 1024, and that's actually about 960. I can use my little measure it tool here real quick, and we can take like a quick rough measurement of the width of the Zipcar site. And I see it's about 949, let's say 950 pixels. And if you start to count like little curves and shadow effects, they probably designed for a 960 pixel uh, width also for their container. So super common thing to do. Okay, so that's what I've done. And this is a fixed width layout. Fixed. I've set it to be 960 pixels, period. That's what it's going to be. And then I've given it auto margin on the left and the right so that it's centered in the page. So I've got a fixed layout. And at a wide resolution, there's more space on the left and the right. And at a smaller resolution, there's less space on the left and the right. And if I size this to 1024, here you go, the page fits in it nicely. Now if someone goes smaller than 1024, then like Amazon, I'm going to get that annoying little horizontal scroll at the bottom of my page. Okay, So my demo page here is not catering to anybody smaller than a 1024 resolution. So for a fixed layout, perfectly reasonable thing to do. By the way, a lot of blogs, in fact, I'd even hazard to say that most blogs that you read, and a lot of websites out there are blogs, use a fixed width layout. Okay, So fixed width layout, easy enough. You just set the width of your parent container to the width that you want. Okay, Now, I think I'll pick this up in a second video here, but I want to talk about how we can switch this over into a flexible layout.